My name is Ian Clement and this is uh, part of our Cisco 101 series and this is going to be looking at the PAC process. Uh, PAC is essentially the method of extracting data from your Cisco model and creating the file for usage in the CAM software, be that uh, uh, FabShop or CAMDuct or our third party one, basically our uh, Vicon interface. So basically I've got a, a model here, uh, with sorted bits and pieces on it. I now want to actually fabricate this. Um, from the Cisco ribbon menu, we have pack. So when I start up pack, I get to look at this interface. What we've got here, I've got things like settings. Um, now the settings are dependent on the output format you have selected, uh, though in practice they're all exactly the same. So I'm actually currently on the Trimble Fab Shop one. Uh, it doesn't matter which one I was actually on there. And when I go to settings, this is essentially allowing me to map and rename uh, various components. Uh, for example, the pressure classes. And so you can see here we're in the uh, for the Fab Shop. So basically, it's allowing this is the Cisco name I was using for a pressure class. This is the name that I want to output. With regards to FabShop and the uh, the third party, the other format, uh, this mapping can actually be just ignored. The mapping can be done uh, as it's imported into, for this example, FabShop. Uh, if FabShop sees this particular name of a pressure class or specification, um, and it does not exist in the FabShop software, uh, the FabShop user will actually be prompted for that name as it's imported. So essentially he's doing the mapping at the import end <coughs> as opposed to Cisco doing the mapping on the output end. Now that is different with the uh, Camduct software. Uh, if you are exporting to the Camduct software, the names that you export must match the names that exist in Camduct. Camduct will just ignore. For example, uh, let's use Connect as an example there. If I create a brand new connector within uh, Cisco called ABC, by default, that will get exported as ABC. Now, when Camduct reads that file in, if it does not know what an ABC connector is, if that doesn't exist in your database, uh, it'll just ignore it and you'll get a blank, a blank connector. So in, in the case of Camduct, what I may do, I would see the ABC connector here. Uh, I may decide I want to map that to uh, slip and drive, for example, as it goes into Camduct. Uh, but so it's, it's really just the Camduct software where this becomes particularly relevant uh, with regards to FabShop and the other formats. Uh, the mapping is actually more conveniently done uh, at the import into Cam rather than the export from Cisco. But so typically it's set at once and not, not really messed with anymore. So let's go through what you want. So first thing I'm going to do here is define the name of the file I want to create. So in my case, I want to call this uh, duct. Let me make this level one. And it's going to be supplier as an example. And again, the naming is completely up to you. Uh, we have flagged it as based being job number, level and system. So you can see the, the, the fully formed name down here. Uh, in reality, these can be used for whatever, whatever format you want. Uh, make sure you are set to a US Imperial. Uh, prevent it doing metric and these switches down the bottom here. So I'm going to start off with a, a typical format which would be this. So this first switch allows me to autumn to essentially re resend ductwork. If this box is unchecked um, I can't accidentally send the same piece of duct twice. I can't include in two jobs. Uh, now in the scenario where I do need to resend a piece of duct make sure this box is checked. Uh, you have the option of adding group numbers. Uh, group numbers are, again, a way of actually breaking up a model. Uh, we'll look at group numbers a little later there. The add job information to the processed uh, tag. So as I actually export this data, it will actually add to each individual piece the date it was exported and what the file name was it was actually included in. So this makes it a little easier to actually track things. Uh, find out what's actually been happened with the thing. Uh, the locate by item number. Uh, once I've actually got things selected, I can actually highlight things and actually jump to that piece to maybe check it out. Uh, better practice and better workflow is actually make sure these pieces are right before you get to this point. 
but it does actually allow you to actually modify parts as you go through. And if you find two identical pieces, do you want these grouped together? So typically I want them, so if I've got, um, let's say these three pieces of straight duct are identical, all numbered as number 10, I want them actually grouped together, which is basically the option off here. Again, typically once these have been set, you very rarely change these coming off that. So I'm going to actually export these. So the first thing I'm going to do is do the select and drag a window around the area I want to actually export. So in my case, I want to do everything. So with all this selected there, if I do finish at the top left, Cisco or Pack actually analyzes that. And you can see here, I've got three tabs at the top for my rectangular round and purchase components. And then uh, for each of the subcategories, it will be broken up in the fitting. So these are my rectangular straights. These are my square bends, square elbows, transitions, radius bends, shoe taps, etc. And on the round side, we've got the same thing, different components on the round. And then for purchased, I actually have my couplings all set to be purchased or not fabricated, let's say. Um, these components will not be transmitted out to FabShop or to the CAM software. Um, so, so this is pretty much just more of a analyzing what you've got, make sure what you, it's what you expect. Uh, the one thing to be careful about, if you ever get an unprocessed items tab, that is things that uh, Cisco has found that it can't do anything with. So it may be, um, uh, for example, if if, if, it's, if you end up with a, uh, maybe a, a straight piece of duct that only has one connector defined on it, or there is no gauge or material, uh, typically it means a piece has been manually edited after Cisco's had hold of it, and when it's got to pack, pack rechecks it and says, oh, you forgot to want this connector, or whatever it thinks is actually missing off there. Um, now you've got a couple of options before I actually send it out to the CAM file. Uh, you do have this export, uh, Excel export. If I go in here, I'm going to, again, the Excel file it creates is basically the same as the file name up here. I'm just going to put this on the desktop. Uh, this is really defined, uh, designed for uh, manual fitting entry. So if you're actually automated, there's no need to do this step. But I just want to actually show you that you can actually, you can actually do this if need be. So let's just generate the Excel file. Typically, after you've done this selection and just reviewed what you've got, you're going to hit Submit. And this is going to go away, create the actual file. I can now download the file. And again, I'm just going to store this on my desktop. Hit the OK. And just confirming that it has actually created uh, this duct L1SA. And then to, based on the format you've chosen, uh, this extension will change. But this was a FabShop one. Therefore, I've got the FabShop extension on there. So once I hit the uh, OK off there, it comes back and pack basically loops back around, allowing me to create a, a second file and third file, etc. So that's the basic function uh, of actually getting the data out there. Let me just cancel off there a second. Let me show you what you can do with these pieces. So now these have all gone out. Let me find, uh, yeah, let me look at one of these pieces over here. This piece is straight. If I select any of the pieces I've actually sent out, uh, if you look at the properties on here, and scroll down a little way to the identity data, uh, this is the pack status. That was that switch that was basically filling out. So this is basically saying this piece was sent uh, on this particular date, and it's part of this particular job. So again, this can be part of a schedule, um, statuses, things like that. You can actually track when parts are actually issued or when you've released them for fabrication, etc, uh, etc, et coming off that. Um, now, another thing that you can do, I, I, I briefly mentioned there, is the grouping number. So maybe, if you just tab through this run, this run here, I may want to uh, be part of a, what we call a group. So if I highlight all of this and go up to uh, the filter on here, I'm going to take out things like flex ducts so they don't get sent, and obviously air terminals don't, so it's basically just duct and duct fittings. Look after that. Uh, you now have the option here of group number. So I may call this uh, supply low pressure, as an example. Uh, group number can be anything you want. And you grab this one. 
maybe this, again using the filter, which should be down to just duct and duct fittings, this may be my return error. So that's basically added that group number into all these components. What that actually means is, if I go back into pack, I can actually make use of the filter by group number. So if I check this box now, look on the drop down, I can say, I want to get just the return air. So now when I do my select, I can again drag a window around everything. Let me just turn the other one on there a second. I do, because I've already processed this, I will need to include parts I've already processed. You can see that it wasn't selecting anything, and that's because it was told, don't reprocess pieces. So basically back here, back to my return air, back to my select, drag a window around there, and you can see only the stuff that's being flagged as return air is being picked up. So if I do the finish on there, you'll see here, and again, it highlights in yellow just to warn me I've already sent these parts out for fabrication. And finally, just a quick look at that uh, Excel file. So this is the Excel file it actually created. And again, like I was saying earlier, this is completely optional. I open this one up. Um, you'll notice the format is very similar to what we're actually looking on the screen there. So this is basically the rectangular straights. I've got tabs for each of my pieces. And you can see here, you've got a little um, diagram of where all these dimensions go. And you've got things like obviously the, the throat sizes, angles, in this case, connectors. So if you are having to send your duct work out for fabrication by a third party, and they don't want the electronic file, uh, you can just email this to them send this to them, they can print this out and then just type this information in. Obviously that's not as good as the direct download, um, but in some scenarios that's actually what's required. Okay, thank you.